Guys, I have always desired to have an app in my phone which can be used to control all the Wi-Fi networks that I have at home. How cool would it be if I can control my devices from my app connected to my Wi-Fi network? Well, Fing is a network monitoring solution which helps you facilitate that and in this video, we are going to explore it. Fing has around 22 million registered users, 15 million plus scans and 4.5 plus trust pilot rating. It is highly trusted for securing and managing network connections. Later in the video, we will see how we can install Fing agent on this Raspberry Pi so that we can use the local APIs that Fing provides. This video is going to be very fun. I'm very excited to explore Fing. Let's move on to a computer screen and let's get started. So as you can see, I'm inside my computer screen and we are going to install Fing. So the very first thing that I'm going to do here is installing Fing Desktop. Now, what is Fing Desktop? It's an app that we can install on a machine so that we can have access to all the Wi-Fi data. Now we'll click on login and we are going to create a new account on Fing. And after we create a new account on Fing, we are going to click here to download Fing Desktop. And while the Fing Desktop is downloading, we are going to talk about why we need Fing and what exactly it is. So as we already talked about, it's a network monitoring solution and the top features of Fing comprises of these features. Number one, it helps you get your device inventory, which means that you have access to the list of devices that are connected connected to your network. Secondly, Fing gives you control over your network by letting you blocking the devices that you want. So you have a list of all the devices and if you want to block a particular device, you can do that using Fing. Third thing is that you can track network events like when was the outage. It provides real time notification on network events like outages, new devices, vulnerability and timeline for easy tracking. You can limit anybody's internet connection. You can detect hidden cameras. You can track user activity. You can use tools like Ping and DNS lookup to troubleshoot your networking issues and you can check your network speed and compare it with the speed that your ISP promised you to give. So talking about Fing's products, there are primarily three products Fing has. Number one is Fing's phone app, which can be an iOS app or an Android app. Number two is Fing desktop app, which can be a desktop app and it is also available for Mac. Number three is an interesting one and it is Fing agent for Raspberry Pi. You can install Fing on your Raspberry Pi and then you can use the local APIs that Fing provides. You can do pretty much everything that you can do on on desktop and phone app by using Fing on your Raspberry Pi. We are going to see how to install Fing on our Raspberry Pi very soon. But before that, let's explore Fing app on our machine. So Fing has been downloaded on our computer. Now I'll open this app and I'll install Fing on my machine. And I am waiting for it to install. And once it is installed, I'm going to open it and let's proceed with the authentication. It is asking me to authenticate. Let's click here and let's authenticate and boom, I am inside my account. Now, the moment I click on overview, it has detected that I am inside my ROG Strix G713 machine. It has also detected that I'm using a tender router. Basically, this is the name of my Wi-Fi network. I can verify the speed, I can test speed and it will check for network speed, download speed as well as upload speed. So my download speed is 91.6 and my upload speed is 92.93.1 or something. Amazing. It, it is also telling me about my ISP. Now, these are the list of devices that are connected to my Wi-Fi network. It has detected a router. It has detected my laptop. Now, these are some of the devices that I personally use and it is able to detect all these devices. Secondly, I can always come to this security tab and get an act of how secure my network is. It will show me all the warnings. It will show me all the tests that passed and and the test that needs attention. Now I can also use Fing's APIs, which are basically local APIs by going to the URL. But before that, you'll have to click here, you'll have to come to preferences, and then you'll have to click on local API, and you'll have to enable local APIs. As you can see, Fing is providing me the list of local API URLs. I can always click here, and once I click here, you can see that it is showing me which device was connected when, and whether it is currently connected or not. So if it is currently connected, the state will show show as up, otherwise the state will show as down. You can see these are some of the devices which were previously connected, but these are not connected as of now. One of the devices being my Raspberry Pi. Now, Fing APIs allow developers and businesses to automate network management. The API provides access to device information, event logs and network data. We can use these network APIs like any other API and we can integrate it with our custom applications and use these APIs like any other APIs. One of the best parts is that it also has an option to download the open API specification 
information so that we can get more information about our API and we can use all these APIs effectively. So it provides me two endpoints. One is for seeing all the devices and the other for seeing all the people that are connected to the network. Now you can always set an API key to make your Fing API access secure and you can disallow some of the people that are on the same network and you don't want them to use the Fing APIs. So we can always have an API key and you can pass your API key like this. Now obviously you can keep this API key more secure by making it longer but this is an example and in most of the cases you want your API key to be very small because you are the only person or you or somebody you trust are only the person that are using your API especially when you are on a home network. Now it is very easy to install Fing on your Raspberry Pi. Installing thing on a Raspberry Pi makes it very easy for us to access local APIs. Plus Raspberry Pi is something which is always running so it helps us keep the Fing app always alive. Now if you're looking for a guide on how to install Fing agent on Raspberry Pi you can check out this guide which I am going to link in the description. This is the official guide that is going to teach you everything that you need to know about installing Fing agent on your Raspberry Pi. I am personally using this Fing agent on my Raspberry Pi and it works like a charm. Now at the right side of my screen is the guide that is provided by Fing and let me put the terminal at the left hand side and as you can see that I'm copying the commands that are present in this guide. The first command is apt update and the second command is apt upgrade. I'm going to give you the link of this guide so you can also follow along. Basically I'm simply following this guide and I'm copy pasting the command. The first command is apt install snapd. I'm waiting for it to finish. And then I'm going to copy sudo snap install core and one by one I'll be running these commands. I'm using OBS to record the screen on a Raspberry Pi. So yeah, it's a little bit laggy in comparison to my regular videos, but I think that should not be a problem. I'm waiting for this command to finish and then I'll be pasting the next command. We can use snap to install the Fing agent, which is why we are installing snap on our Raspberry Pi. When I came across this guide, I followed this and it pretty much worked. So now I'm copy pasting this command to make sure that snapd is enabled and running. I'm waiting for this command to finish. And now the next step is to install the Fing agent. So let's copy this Fing agent command and let's paste it. And as you can see that snap is downloading Fing agent and it will be installing it on my Raspberry Pi. Now why are we installing Fing agent? Let us understand. The very first thing that we are trying to do is installing Fing agent on a Raspberry Pi and we are connecting our Raspberry Pi to our Wi-Fi. Now our Fing app is running on the same Wi-Fi. Our phone is connected to the same Wi-Fi, which is why what happens is that this Fing agent can be directed by the Fing app on our phone. Now, once we configure this Fing agent, this Fing agent can take over and it can basically start monitoring our network. And we will get real-time updates in all our devices, even if they are off. So our app will get all the updates. Even if you're not at home, your app will get all the updates. Even if you turn off your laptops, you can have all the monitoring data sent to you through the Fing app because your Fing agent is running. Your Raspberry Pi is running the Fing agent, which is taking care of all these things. The Fing agent takes care of monitoring the network and sending all the data to your phone once it is configured. One of the things that I really liked about this Fing agent is that it sends real-time emails also. You don't have to open the Fing app. Wherever you are, if you have access to your emails, you can get emails like this and you have all the monitoring updates of your Wi-Fi at home or work. So let's see how we can configure this Fing agent. Now, as you can see, I'm inside of my phone screen and it says Fing agent has been detected. Now. I am the one who has installed this Fing agent, so I'll acknowledge it. And now I'm going to click on this location button and it basically takes my address. I am going to click on home to make sure that this is marked correctly. And then I'll click on done. Now, as you can see, it is showing me all my devices. It has detected all the devices that I have. Plus it has detected this Raspberry Pi where I've installed this Fing agent. Now that we have understood Fing APIs, it's time to build an app. So I'm going to use this local API and I'm going to build an app with this local API. As you can see, I'm also opening chat GPT just in case and I'm creating a main.py, which is going to be our Flask app. But before that, we'll have to install Flask. So let's pull up our terminal and I'm going to type pip install flask and flask will get installed. Make sure that you have Python installed already. And now I'm going to create a static folder and a templates folder so that I can create my static files and my template. Now let's start coding this app. 
I'm going to import Flask and I'm going to create a basic Flask app in order to create this Flask app. And also I'm going to create a dashboard.html which will render a dashboard. And as you can see that I've created a dashboard.html here. So let's start coding our app. I'm going to say from Flask, import Flask. And then we are going to import render template and JSONify. So let's do that. And also we are going to say app is equal to flask and we are going to say underscore underscore name and that is going to create our app. Now we are going to create some endpoint. I'm going to create two endpoints here, but before that we'll also import request and we are going to simply say request.get and we are going to put the URL here. This is the local API. Make sure that this is local API and it is not going to work on somebody else's device. And let's say r is equal to request.get. And after I say r is equal to request.get, I can always do r.json, but I can always go to the documentation and verify this. So you can always go to request documentation. I'm sure it's r.json, but again, you can go to the documentation and you can always verify. r.json is going to give you the parsed dictionary with all the data. So say network data is equal to r.json and we have all the network data here. Now what we are going to do is create two endpoints. The first one is going to be our slash and this will be our main dashboard. So let's say def dashboard, we are creating a function and now we are going to return render template. I'll return my dashboard template and I'll pass in the network data devices. So I'll say devices is equal to network data devices. So there is a key called devices. If you look at the API response, we are using that data and I'm going to populate my dashboard.html using some basic HTML. I have some tables here and we are using Jinja templating and I'll also populate style.css. This is very basic table and CSS styles. Now let's say app.run so that we can test our app and we'll do debug is equal to true so that the debug is on. The Flask app has been started. Now we'll control click here and let's see if it works. Control click to open the app and wow, it is showing me all the devices. The network devices dashboard is here. You can see the IP address, the state, the name of the router and device. And you can also see that when was it first seen and when was it changed, which is amazing. And I am also adding another endpoint here, which is going to show me the devices and it is going to be an API. It is going to be a JSON response. Now the thing is you can always change this JSON response. I am putting the JSON response as it is, but the idea of this route is that you can always change the network data and you can always change the way thing is showing the APIs through your Flask app. So basically your Flask app is showing this JSON data. Let's test it out slash devices and you can see that we have created our custom API. So if you want to show some additional fields or maybe you want to remove some fields, you can always do processing here and then you are going to get the results in slash API slash devices. How cool is that? So yeah, that was all about this video. If you want to access the APIs and if you want to get more features from Fing, you can always upgrade to starter plan or premium plan. You can always sign up and use a free plan and you get up to three scans per day, internet speed test and other features. But if you are somebody who wants to get more control over your network, you can always go to starter or premium plan and you can get unlimited automated scans, seven days of event timeline and automated security checks. You can also get hidden camera detector if the this is something that you want all for just $24.99 per year, which in my opinion is a great pricing. If you are looking for network security, you are just paying $25 a year and same goes for premier. If you are a business user and you want continuous monitoring and you want to use thing very aggressively, you can always switch to premium plan and that should get the job done for you. Some of the real life use cases of thing are that it protects you from intrusions. It helps you detect hidden cameras in public networks and rentals like Airbnb. It can also help you set internet downtime for your personal well-being and it can also help you troubleshoot your network issues with smart tools so i'll put the link to fing in the description and you can check it out download it try the free plan for sure and if you like it you can always upgrade so i hope this video was helpful thank you so much guys for watching this video and i will see you next time